Hey guys and welcome back. Do you also have an HP server with battery that have failed on your RAID controller? That could look like this? Then I think you should take a look at this video today because I'm going to show you guys how you cheaply can change or switch out the batteries into this to new ones instead that are a lot cheaper than the originals. So when you have opened this up and located a battery, normally it's on this end on the 380. On the 360 it depends a little bit. If the machine is running, you will have those LEDs blinking away or lighting up. And this potentially means that this is gone, this battery. Uh, you have the LED codes on the internet if you want to see them. But before we start to fiddle around with this one, shut off the server and we are ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to shut off and the power LEDs are going off. So now we can now remove it, it's just a matter of pulling this out, like that. So we now have the battery unit here on the table. And what's important when you do this change is that you know what type of battery you are going to swap out. So basically this unit here consists of two parts, uh, and I'm not sure if this is the same on all units or not, but this unit is like that for the HP G6. You have this PCB here where you have the charging and everything and this is what the, the actual the, the computer itself, the server itself talks to. And on this end here, inside here you have the battery. So in this battery we have 4.8 volt nickel metal hydride and we have roughly 650 milliamp hour. What this tells us is that we have four batteries or cells in series with roughly 650 milliamp hour. Uh, I don't recommend smaller battery than this. You can go up a little bit in size if you need to. Let's open this up. And if, if you press in the middle here, you will see that this protection actually pops out. So just take it with a screwdriver and open it up. So inside here we have, we can see two batteries at least, and I'm guessing there are two in each slot. So let's get them out. But before we get them out, we should remove this PCB. And that's really simple, just taking this clip and pry it a little bit. And you can lift this board up and out. And here you actually see the battery sticking out. If you want to keep them, you can do that. And uh, before we go any further, let's measure the voltage of this battery. And this ba battery is basically zero. There's nothing. This is shorted. So let's get the battery out. Uh, and they are glued in here, so they can be a little bit tricky to get out. But you don't have to care about the cells itself. So just pry them out. Here you have them. They are a normal sort of battery. You can buy V650 HRT. So you actually can buy those cells. And as you see here, there are two cells in each. And or four cells are in series. Uh, I didn't go and buy cells like those ones because they didn't exist in my store. I actually went and bought four nickel metal hydride AAA batteries instead. Those AAA batteries is roughly 800 milliamp hour, 1.2 volt per cell, and that is equals 4.8 volt 800 milliamp hour, and they should work. So if we lay them down in this battery compartment, you will see that I actually fit quite nice. This battery compartment will be a little bit higher, but that's not really an issue. Let's solder them together and add them up. If you were a little bit gentle, those clips would have stayed in place and you could have reused them. But I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to solder directly to the board. Start with removing all the plastic.
can always be a little bit sensitive to solder that sells that close, so keep that in mind, be quick. Something like that. Uh, I would like to have heat shrink around it, but I don't have heat shrink of this size, I think. So to connect this one up to the board here, it's going to sit like that. We need two wires going in here, and we can see that there are small marks, positive and minus. Be very careful when doing this because if you short this out, yeah, it won't like you. And you fiddle this back. So let's add some glue to this so it sticks properly in this container. We're also adding some glue just to protect the, the terminals here so we don't mess anything up. So we now have our new battery, the one that we, we modified. And as you can see, comparing to this one here, you can see that it's not as thin anymore. So it won't fit on the holder as it did before. So you need to be aware of where you put this down. So let's hook this up. Make sure you get this in the correct way around. And just plug it in like that. And you can see the auxiliary is still lightening up. And that's because I still have power on the motherboard. So let's start this server up again. We can see that one is blinking away and we have now two LEDs or two blinks in a row on the bottom LEDs. And now we have one blink per second and it mixes up. So if we look at the charging now, it will now say something else. It's temporarily disabled because it is charging. So now we have to wait somewhere between 5 minutes, 15 minutes or 2 hours and see how long time this takes before it is charged up. So let's leave it there. And that's basically it for this video. Uh, I can say that I have successfully converted uh, quite a few HP servers by doing this and it works great. You also get a higher capacity rating and that's really good as well. So please don't forget to leave us a like and comment if you want and subscribe to my channel for more random stuff. And if you have something specific that you want to see, feel free to comment that below.